these AIO fans seriously look like another high performance fan. In fact, if it weren't for the color of these blades, I probably wouldn't be able to tell them apart. Welcome to Machines and More. So yeah, these Lian Li AAO fans, they're uh, T30 doppelgangers, right? So uh, we're taking a look at the Lian Li GA2 Trinity performance. Yeah, it's a mouthful. Uh, GA2 is the product line. Uh, Trinity refers to the three cosmetic configurations the user can choose for the pump head. And as far as that performance name, that sets this one apart as a higher performing product in that lineup. So I'll talk a little bit more in detail on that in the review today. Real quick, hit that subscribe and that like button. It really helps the channel, big thanks. So the unit today was provided by Lean Lee for the purposes of evaluation and review, but I am not compensated by them for this review and you can expect a fair and independent evaluation from all the reviews on this channel. I first saw this at Lian Lee's event at Computex last year. They unveiled a few AOs at the same time, and this one actually has been in production for some time now. Although there was a stop sale a few months ago while they were sorting out some of the issues with the pump having weird noises or rattling when you uh, dialed it down to low RPM. So I figured uh, it was like 2,200 to 3,000 RPM. And so because of that stop sale, I tested this one a little bit longer. Now this is the revision one that I have here, uh, but I haven't experienced any major issues with it. My opinion will be based on this one here. So highlights here, when you got a thicker rad, this one is 32 millimeters. The heat fins have a second layer that they call double stacked. Essentially there's a second set of what appears to be smaller heat fins that are stacked underneath the heat fins that you do see, they're layered and that increases the contact area for heat exchange or kind of offset, it's kind of nifty. At the radiator end, they built in a set of 45 degree swivel fit fittings. Uh, so that allows the tubing run to be a little bit more flexible. Although you can see here, it adds quite a bit of height. Uh, so if you needed to fit it into a compartment such as in the TD500 that I tested it with here, it might be kind of challenging if you want to put the elbows down. So because it was tricky to fit, I did have to test this one with the elbows up position, which is not optimal in the long run, but for short-term testing, it doesn't really matter. The AIO fans, they're not the Lee and Lee P28s, but they are 28 millimeters thick. And yes, they do look a lot like the T30s here, but they're definitely not the T30s. They do, however, have additional similarities to the T30s. For one, they run up to 3000 RPM and you can toggle the fan speed range only with low or high though. And so for Lee and Lee, they use this little switch that's attached to the first fan. Uh, the lower setting sets a max of 2300 RPM. The higher setting allows it to go all the way up to 3000 RPM. They're daisy chained. The cables are hidden inside the frame. So you actually cannot separate these fans. It is quite a sleek setup with the cable routing though, because it's, it's going from frame to frame to frame. Pump head is tall and with the caps, they get even taller, okay? So you got three caps here. One is the standard one. This is the one it comes mounted with. It's similar to an infinity mirror type of effect. You can also swap out for this translucent ring here with the mirror center or the translucent ring with the translucent center and that diffuses the light quite evenly. And so the third one retains this outer ring, but swaps in the mirrored piece for the middle. Other than this, the unit doesn't have any other lighting since the fans, they're actually quite business-like. In order to connect to your system, the pump head does require SATA power, okay? And then in order to communicate with your system, it needs to plug, be plugged into a USB 2.0 header. And through that, you can interact with Lean Lee's L Connect 3 software. You can change the pump speeds and the lighting effects through that. On the pump head, there is additional two ports and one allows you to connect to the motherboard's five volt RGB header if you wanna control within the motherboard instead of L Connect. And then there is another port if you want to bridge L Connect's lighting instructions downstream to other devices. So more cables if you need it. Matching hardware for Intel sockets, it just uses a back plate with spacers and a plate anchors the pump unit to your CPU. For AMD, it actually just uses the two point solution and it hooks onto the stock AMD brackets on your motherboard. 
And sometimes this type of two point mounting solution can lead to variable performance if the user isn't tightened down uh, the unit properly. But that being said, this doesn't just rely on thumb pressure. So you can screw this down and I think it'll be mostly fine here. So the unit I have here is the Rev one, like I mentioned, there's no major issues with mine. And to test this, I ran it two ways. One on the Ryzen 5800X in open air, and I compared it against the very good Fantex Glacier 1 T30 Gen 2, which also has a thicker rad. It is an Acetec unit with the best 120 millimeter fan uh, when you don't consider thickness. And this has a more performance oriented target market as well. But here's the crazy thing. It's already really good, but the performance is not even close to the Lanley unit. So at the first noise normalized level at about a dust bulb of the noise floor, the T30 spin at about 1400 RPM while the GA2 fans are at 1250 RPM. Gap here is three degrees, which is very significant. And at this level, if you can get a three degree advantage over what the a unit using the best fans on the market. I think you're doing something right. Up it a little louder to 3.3 dBA above the noise floor. Still about a three degree gap. And then I maxed out the T30s and that is about 14.4 decibels above the noise floor. This is crazy loud territory and I don't think anyone is going to be regularly running these fans at this uh, at this level, but for science here, right? The Lee and Lee fans only hit about 2580 for the same noise level, but yeah, 4.5 degree gap here. So when we finally max out the GA2, the temperature improves further. Although at this point, the noise is beyond tolerable, plus 18.6 decibels by the noise floor. The takeaway is at the low noise level I tested here, the Lee and Lee GA2 is better than the Fantex unit with T30s at full blast. The magic sauce is in the radiator and the pump because testing with the T30s at the same RPM for the low noise interval, we actually get a much better result than when those same fans were on the ASTEC unit. So just by putting the T30 fans on this 360 millimeter unit, the result is better than the stock Lee performance by about a degree. And the performance is even better than that at the uh, next higher noise level with the stock fans. I also tested this in the TD500 Max for some noise optimized fan levels with AM5. This was 7900X clocked at 5.4 gigahertz at 1.25 volts. About 177 watts package power here for the AM5 CPU. Up against the stock 360, which is a souped up Cooler Master Atmos 360 with a thicker rad. And at a level where you practically don't hear the fans, the Atmos does a little better. 1250 RPM for both units at the next noise level. The Lee and Lee does squeak ahead a little bit. And then finally add about 1500 RPM on the Cooler Master and 1400 RPM on the GA2. The Lee and Lee does fall behind. So actually the custom Atmos 360 and T500 Max is quite good. The performance with this unit is excellent. So what's so special about this radiator? Well, we talked about the double stacked fins already. The other thing is the radiator core. It's pretty maxed out. There's very little gap between the frame and the heat fins. This is really tight. It's much tighter than an Acetec unit. It's tighter than uh, most units on the market. You also have a wider radiator. You got more surface area overall. So these little things, they clearly add up. The stock fans are, you know, they don't just look good. They, they actually are quite good. And they only lose to the T30s by about a degree and a half when everything else is equal. So these are decent fans. Now they're not available for sale individually by Lee and Lee, but maybe they should, right? Well, um, I am told they are quite similar to the P28s. Let's take a quick listen to the acoustics here. So there's a lot to like here. For one, the performance absolutely lives up to the name. I think they did a good job with the fan cable routing as well. It's very elegant. Users will appreciate that. One point of improvement, I really don't like the fact that it still has to use SATA power because that's an extra cable that many of us would like to skip these days. 
And then you have another cable if you require the connection to the USB 2.0 header, which if you want full functionality, that's what it's going to take. Uh, the radiator, it is slightly wider, so you have to account for that. Although I think if your case is gonna be able to take a 360 already, that width, it's really going to be the limiting factor. But you do have to watch out for these elbows here, in case this is too tall to fit into the tray at the position that you want to put it in. But this does make the tubing a little bit more elegant. Pricing is around $170 US right now. For performance this good, it's a very fair price. Five-year warranty, which actually might be useful because there have been a few documented issues with the Rev1. If I listen very, very carefully at the sub 3000 RPM range, there might be a tiny click with these, but they leanly have uh, acknowledged the issue. So the revision two is out and hopefully they, they are resolving the RMAs. But with that amount, I think durability would be one factor that would give me some pause here. So in summary, this is a performance first AO with some neat quality of life features, special lighting effects as well and a uh, good reasonably priced unit overall. So anyway, I hope you found the review helpful. Please give a like and make sure you are subscribed. Links down below. Thanks for watching.